so folks, two things happened in the last little bit. One of them just moments ago, which are the height of humiliation for old Donnie. We're going to get into both of these. First, one of his former rivals, a person that he still blames for every single bad thing that happens in his life, absolutely tore him down by making it very clear that he is a nobody and therefore not above the law, and also making it clear that he's a nobody that no one cares about. Donald Trump has been snubbed and is not allowed to attend the funeral of the queen. Guys, this is glorious stuff. I want to play you a couple clips. First, of Hillary of all people tearing down Donald like she hasn't in years. And then this stupid idea, which has been quashed by the British themselves, that somehow it was a good idea for Trump to go to the funeral. The rule of law, holding people accountable is central to our nation. And both as uh, Secretary of State and as a private citizen, I have answered every question I've ever been asked. I've testified for 11 hours. I've, you know, been involved in anything that uh, was asked of me to try to answer uh, any kind of uh, issue. I think that's the way the system is supposed to work, even if you are, you know, not sure why uh, you're being uh, in, uh, with the spotlight on you. And therefore, I really believe that at the end of the day, no one is above the law and no one uh, should be uh, escaping accountability if indeed the facts and the evidence point to them having uh, done something that anyone else in our country would be investigated for and maybe even charged. So it sounds like you're saying that he should be treated like he were he would if he was Donald J. Trump, somebody who was a, a civilian, an average citizen, not a former president or potential candidate. I do, because, I mean, he's he's not the president and we do have some special uh, exceptions for someone actually in the office. Um, so I do think that. Uh, just like any American, if there is evidence, that evidence should be pursued. That I, I, There's something that is just like fascinating me, which is the notion that it's going to be basically left up to President Biden as to whether or not he brings other presidents with him to the Queen's funeral. I mean, the, 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 the UK has made it very clear that's up to the president. He's invited and he can bring whatever delegation. So obviously Obama, you know, Carter... Uh, Bush, no brainers. What about Trump? Will he invite Trump? We'll see. I mean, that is a difficult uh, question of protocol of diplomacy. But I am told by a couple of diplomatic officials that uh, look, that the uh, Buckingham Palace is leaving it up to every country individually. I mean, imagine the nightmare of trying to do former presidents and former, de you know, defense ministers. But in the in this case, it would be an easy solution if Trump wasn't in the picture. We'll see what they do. I mean, President Obama, when he was in office, he invited a President Bush, President Clinton, President Carter to go with him to Nelson Mandela's funeral as part of, of the delegation. So there is protocol for having U.S. presidents invite other presidents. Who knows? Maybe in the spirit of, uh, of uh, forgiving and giving, uh, President Biden will invite uh, Donald uh, Trump on the Air Force One. I doubt that'll happen, but I do expect some type of a bipartisan delegation. But look, they are leaving it to the White House, we're told. The White House is saying we're not going to say anything about this until the palace makes funeral arrangements. But by Monday, uh, they're going to have to figure this out because the funeral time will be announced tomorrow. Work. See, I think, Yasmin, I think that the, the, vet, the, the clever move is to invite him. Yes. And then see if he goes. And see if he goes. I don't think President Trump, former President Trump, would want to be subordinate on Air Force One. And I think probably he prefers his own plane anyway. Well, what do you think? I think that's probably true. Uh she does a fantastic job there when she makes it clear that for above any other reason, Donald Trump is just a guy now. He's not president anymore. Maybe there are exceptions made for people when they are actively in office because, of course, you don't want your current president having to deal with lawsuits day in, day out. Whether you agree with that philosophy or not, it's a debatable one. But she's like, this dude is a nobody. He is literally no more important than any random Joe or Jane walking down the street. So if he did a crime, charge him and lock him up. And that's going to be humiliating to Trump. And then you saw CNN and their new right wing turn even going further right than they have been trying to make this idea that it was a good idea to invite Donald Trump. But the British themselves are putting the kibosh on that idea. At least as of right now, you have this headline from one of the biggest papers in Britain saying questions have been asked in the U.S. over whether Donald Trump 
Trump would be invited, but British sources have scotched that idea that he would accompany the U.S. delegation. And then it says here, Queen's funeral, invitations for world leaders, and a snub for Donald Trump. And so Biden is going, but as of right now, any other invitations to big names in the U.S., whether it's former presidents and their spouses, will be made on an individual by individual basis, and Donald Trump has not been invited, and a lot of people are saying it ain't going to come. Here's another source suggesting. The report points out that the Bidens have received two personal invitations rather than being asked to form a U.S. delegation, according to CNN, which cited unnamed White House officials, before adding that inquiries to the Trump camp about hearing from the royal family went unanswered. The report adds that Trump has boasted about his relationship with the late Queen. However, it's never been entirely clear whether that affection was reciprocated. Trump's visits to the U.K. were marred by mass protests and moments when he broke protocol and key, including keeping her waiting for around 10 minutes. And of course, we saw that picture where he walked in front of her. He touched her without her touching him first. All of these sorts of things. And whereas it's very clear on a personal level, the queen very much got along with Michelle and Barack, it is not anywhere near that clear that she had the same relationship with Donald and Melania. And this is devastating for Donald because he's really been begging. He's been pleading on social media, on the regular media to get invited to this. This is the sort of party that he wants to attend, but I don't think it's going to come. And as of right now, he is banned because, again, you cannot just show up. If you have not been invited, you have been told, especially if you're a former president, we do not want you there. A non-invitation is a rejection to someone with the name of Donald Trump. So, guys, whether it's this moment where even his former rivals are saying you're a nobody and therefore aren't above the law, or whether it's the British officials themselves saying, hey, we don't necessarily want you here, you walking controversy. This is devastating for old Donnie.